In this video, we're going to take the imported blade geometry that we made in the previous videos, and we're going to make this geometry into a usable blade that can be 3D printed. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to model the features in it that I've already figured out how to model in one of my previous blade designs, which is over here in this window. What I'm gonna do is go through the step-by-step -step process that I use to create all the features. In this model tree on the left-hand side, I'm gonna drag this down one feature at a time so that we can see the features being created and then I'm gonna recreate them in the new blade model on the right-hand side. If we start with just the imported blade, and then the first thing we're gonna do is put in uh, a datum plane at the base, and that is put in at a distance of 34 millimeters from uh, the center radius of the hub. So we'll come over here, we'll go to plane, and we'll give this a dimension of 34. And then we'll offset another plane from that at 175. And then we'll rename these just so that we know what they are. So this one is the base and this one is the split. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is in this window, we are creating um, datums for positioning the center hole that's going to go up through this through the middle. And in this case, in, in, on this blade, that hole was at the quarter cord, so it was 25% of the way back. On the new blade, it's going to be at 42% of the way back. So on uh, this way, on this one, the way that this was done, I'm going to turn on the axes and the point, was first I created a point at the trailing edge then I put an axis down the center of the blade, then put in a datum plane right at the nose, and then put um, a, a datum plane where the, the spar is gonna go to. So that's up here, and then we put the hole in. So we'll do that same series of operations on this blade. So the first thing we're going to do is put a datum point in at the trailing edge of the blade. So to put this point in, we're going to go point. And then for the references, I'm going to select this line, which is a trailing edge. And then if I tell it to put it at an offset of zero, it's going to point it right on the end of that line. And now we will put in the axis between that point in the front leading edge. So we'll say axis between that point and the trailing edge point. There we go. Uh, let's name this one TE for trailing edge. There, okay. Now we can put in the leading edge plane so we're gonna say we want a plane. We want it to be normal to this axis. And we'll say normal, and we'll make it through that vertex. So there is our datum for the leading edge, and we'll call that base underscore LE. And then the next thing we'll do is put in the datum plane for the length of the spar. And we'll just come over to this side and double check where, what the dimension of that was. Spar depth is 50 millimeters above the split plane. So I'll come back over here and we'll put in a plane 50 millimeters up. And we're calling this one spar depth. All right. And now the next thing we could, we do is put the hole in, in the right spot. And if we come over here, 
we will see that the whole diameter is that regenerate is 8.1 millimeters and that gives a good fit onto the, um, the the carbon rod that I put into there so let's come over to this model and the first thing I need to do is measure the distance between here and here that should match the distance that we came up with for Q blade at position um, zero, it should be about 97.084 millimeters. So let's check and see if that's true. Uh, so we measure between the front plane and the trailing edge point, 97.094. How does that compare? 97.094, perfect, okay. So, let's make our hole we say we want a hole that is a diameter of 8.1 millimeters the depth goes to a plane that we specify and we're going to specify this one the placement is on the base plane which is here and then the offset references we're going to offset from the leading edge plane and also from the axis that we put in and it's going to be on the axis so we're going to say we're going to say that this one what's going on what's it doing we're going to say we want this to be aligned and then this one the distance let's see it was 97.084 is the cord so we say 97.084 times 0.42 and we have it go in the other direction so we put make that a negative so that's the location of the hole that puts us right on the twist axis and we say okay and there is our spar hole on the center of gravity now just for the fun of it let's just see where the true center of gravity of this part is um, when i have uh, when i once i put this axis in so we can check that by hitting analysis mass properties let's see um, i think i have to give it a we have to give it a, a fake density we'll just say the density is one um do a preview look at that so there's our center of gravity and it's right on the axis or close enough that the blade is going to spin properly so now when i have this blade mounted with a with a spar going down the center of this hole it's not going to want to tilt one way or the other if i held this horizontal um, the the blade would not try to pitch in either direction it would just stay stationary and my mechanism for pitching will control the pitch without having to fight against the weight of the blade. So that's that's just what I was going for here. Um, okay, next. The next thing that we put in over on this side. Let's see. What is this datum for? This ends up being a sketch plane for the base feature. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to put a datum go to model plane um, we're going to put a datum through this and it's going to be parallel to the leading edge so we'll make the rotation here uh, instead of offset we'll make it parallel there okay so now we have a datum through that hole and we're going to save this part and we're going to cut off the tip so I do that by clicking the plane that I want to cut with and I select solidify and that cuts away the stuff in the direction of that arrow so there is my base I'm going to save it again and now the next thing that gets put on is we're going to put on this this piece on the base so this extrusion here is what I use to grip the bottom of the of the airfoil um, and that extrusion has dimensions it's 25 millimeters long 
it is 15 millimeters wide, five tall, and then it's got a 30 degree taper on it. Okay, so 15, 25, five. So we come over to here, we're gonna extrude, make an extrusion, make it in both directions symmetrically. We're gonna place it on this sketch plane We'll look at the sketch plane and zoom in. We're going to make the axis of rotation. We have to set it as a reference. So there's our reference. We're going to put a center line on that axis. And now I can come over here. We're going to add another reference. The datum plane here is a reference. And we're going to sketch a line like this and like so it's trying to grab a hold of what the corners of all these facets so i'm going to come down like that and then i'm going to mirror these two lines to the other side and put some dimensions on them so this dimension i think was 15. Um, the height of this was five and i think that this dimension was 35 I'll double check that again later and then we'll connect the two pieces up like that and then we'll get just give this a, a dimension from here to here that's big enough so that it cuts through we'll say that's five so that it goes into the part um, and then we say okay and now the total depth is going to be 25 millimeters. So let's see what that looks like. Why did it fail to regenerate? Oh, I didn't close the bottom. I didn't, I didn't put a, a bottom on the sketch. Let's fix that. There's the bottom line. That should work. There we go. Okay. So there's our base. And we'll save that just in case. All right, and let's compare it to the compare it to this side. Yep. So that looks good. Let's double check the dimensions. Um, it was thirty degrees, not thirty-five. On the other one. Okay. So let's fix that over here. This is thirty degrees. And regenerate. There we go. Okay. Now we have, what this gives us is a base that um, has parallel sides that, are, that run parallel to the center line of the bottom section. And so when I grip the sides of this and control it, um, that's how I can control the, the, the base angle of the, of the rotor blade. Um, Okay, so now the next thing I did was I chamfered the corners on here so that it fit into the cuff that grabs it. It looks like those are half, it's a half a millimeter chamfer. So let's throw a chamfer on here, here, and here, and the size is half a millimeter. Okay, and now on this side what was the next thing we did oh okay so when i created this extrusion here it closed off the hole that i had created that went up in so i have to recut that hole um, so that's what so this cut is this extrusion that's right here um, and then in the top of the blade there is there is another hole, that's this one. So when, when I build these blades and I put them together, the carbon fiber tube goes up through the center and then to, to peg the two halves together so that they don't rotate with respect to each other, um, I put a little piece, a three millimeter diameter um, uh, fiberglass rod. I, I cut a piece and put it in here that joins these two pieces together. So that's what this hole is. So in order to put this hole in, in the right spot, 
you have to have an, a, an axis line that goes from down the center line of the top surface. So let's go ahead and put that in here. We'll put in the axis line and we're going to go from that point to the trailing edge point right there. There is our, there's our axis. And then on this, this one, there, there's nothing special about the placement of this hole. I just put it in at, at a, a hole location that looked right. Um, it looks like the diameter of this is three millimeters. It's 26 deep. So let's go ahead and put that hole in on this part. Um, so we want to go to hole, hole. Uh, click here. The diameter is three millimeters. The depth was 26. Um, and the placement of it is on that plane. The offset references are um, the axis that I just created. So if I click there and the center axis of this hole, how can I? There it is. There. So those are the two things that it's dimensioned off of. So on the first one, it's aligned to it, and the second one is a dimension. So I had 30 millimeters. Let's try 40 and see if that looks okay. So 40 is probably getting a little too close to the end because as this part twists down here in this area, the, this hole would end up getting close to the edges of the, or the, the surface of the part, and it might break through. So let's put this back to, let's try 35 see how that looks looks okay um i won't know until i slice it in my 3d printing software what how close it really gets to that edge for now we'll keep it and hope that it works out um, actually another thing that i could do is instead of putting it in this direction i could make it go up here in the fat part of the part let's do that just for the fun of it. So let's change this dimension to negative 35. Let's see if that works. Yeah. So there's a lot more meat up in this, up in this front part of the part. So let's, let's do it like that instead. Okay. And we're going to save this. And now we have to, we have to clear out the bottom of this hole. So the way that we do that is I'm going to do a sketch. I'm going to extrude material, make it just go all the way through, re remove material and place it on, I'll place it on the plane because I like to place things on planes there. And then when I look at that plane, I can't see anything unless I change my visibility to a wireframe. And now I can put a circle here that lines up with that one and accept that and that should cut a hole through it let's double check we'll go back to the other display did it go all the way through well that oh look at that there's a there's a real thin little there's a little, real thin little bit here wonder why that's there Okay, I investigated and figured out what's going on. There's some kind of weird thing happening with this step uh, imported geometry that is doing something funky with this bottom surface. But right now I have this uh, bottom line of the sketch aligned with this datum plane and it's showing it as being offset even though it's not really like that. So what I figured out is if I come into this section and redefine it, and I look at the section and right now I have, I have it lined up with the datum plane, but when I, when I do that, it doesn't end up in the right spot. So what I did was if I, um, say that one of my references is going to be one of these facet points, and then I go back to here and I line up this line with that point, then everything is fine. So if I click on that, I click on that, I say, make them coincident. Um, I delete this dimension there. So now it lines up and if I say, okay, now that bottom surface is one facet. And now when I look at 
the hole. Right now it's going in the opposite direction, so we have to change that and flip the depth in the other direction there. So now we have a good hole that goes all the way through the part. And we can save everything. And if we come over to our other part, it looks like we have all of the features that were in the base part. So this base part is now ready for printing.